Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Liquor and Jokes' Funny Time Podcast Haha Hour. I'm Jokes. He's AJ. AJ, why don't you tell him what's in store for him on this episode? Lots of fun. Did you call me liquor? It sounded like you said liquor and jokes, but you know I what? I slurred a lot of shit. We're both very tired for different reasons. <laughs> liquor, tell them about what they can watch today. All right. Today, we're going to start off with a now, Mudge Hints, hints everybody. All right. So what we're going to do, I got three hints that I'm going to give you, and I'm also going to do the movie poster because these are movies. And each movie poster is going to get a little less smudged until it's just the original movie poster. And they'll come with hints as well. <laughs> we tear ourselves away from our precious video game in order to be here. So there is the picture. And yes, I intentionally left Statham's name out. It's not a question of do I think I know what this is. It's a question of do I think I know the correct name of this movie? Yeah, that's likely going to be it. <laughs> but here's can your I, first can hint. I say that I think it's Fast and Furious presents uh, Hobbs versus Shaw. You can say that, but no. So uh, my first guess incorrect. It's incorrect. not Fast and Furious presents Hobbs versus Shaw. <laughs> it is not. Your you first think those hint Fast is: Fast and the Furious movies are ever going to present any other movies, or is it just the one there? <laughs> I hope they don't present their Fast own movies. Fast and Furious at this point. presents The Sound of Music. <laughs> It's Quiet just Place Vin Three, Diesel and fucking ludicrous <laughs> on a hill in Germany. I don't. I mean, I'd, I'd watch it. The fucking. hills are alive with the sound <laughs> of them. I am Groot. <laughs> Actually, that was alone pretty... than a fucking. Uh... <laughs> All right, hit number two, AJ. <laughs> I didn't even give you hit number one. <laughs> <laughs> hit number one jason statham is a powerful killing machine as he tries to avenge a fallen person he cares for here is movie poster number two. Oh no now i think it's fucking steven seagal oh god was there a movie with steven seagal and jason statham <laughs> was jason statham never at hard up for cash oh fuck <laughs> well here's hit number two the house of the person he cared for burned down. And yes, these are the first two are vague for a reason. Oh my God. Oh, shitty Stallone movies, but it can't be that recent. There's no way Statham did this post 20, like I'd say like 2018. Like he was established as an actor at that point. He wouldn't need to do like a shitty Stallone cash grab or not Stallone, a shitty Seagal cash grab. I'll give you the year. I believe this was either 2007 or 2008. Yeah, it has to be, like, around that time. Um, fucking beside the law? I don't know. <laughs> just gonna nope. Parody fucking Seagal titles. I have no idea. <laughs> we'll go to the third one. I'm not going to show you the third one yet, the visual hint, because it's not blurred at all, because it's the last hint, but I'll give you the hint, and then I'll switch over if you can't get it. Okay. Third hint. A lot of warlike hand-to-hand -hand combat mixed with some bang-bang bullet guns and with an epic showdown between Jet Li and the J-Man. Pretty sure it's no the only movie idea. that Jet Li did with Jason Statham. Yeah, I bet it is. And boy, if I fucking don't know what it is. All right, here is the final one, which also contains the answer. You might not have even seen the movie. Doesn't feel like I have if it starred Jet Li and Jason Statham. Ah, uh, it's not Steven Seagal. War. All right. Jet well. Li... Never seen it. Oh, well, that's not a fair reason not to get it then. <laughs> Movie poster number two. Hint number one. Jason Statham is a powerful killing machine as he tries to avenge a fallen person he cared for. The beekeeper. <laughs> you got it. The second hint's the same, obviously. The house burned down on somebody he cared for. Uh, those first two hints work for like nine of his movies. <laughs> so I could have dragged this out, but I didn't. I only did two. Yep, Fuck the it. beekeeper. Yeah. This movie was okay, in my opinion. The problem was early on, he just starts spouting a bunch of bullshit about bees. And it's like. It doesn't have anything to do with the movie after relax. that. relax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when yep. Hive is threatened. <laughs> Shut up, Jason Statham. He plays one role. It's already weird that we're trying to justify you, an obviously English person, being in like the fucking agency that's trusted with the national security <laughs> See, of the yeah. entire United States. That's true. I didn't even think about that. Give him a hand. Hey, batting 500 gets you in the fucking Hall of Fame. Now it's everyone's favorite time, intermission. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Da-da-da-da-da-da. 
yeah that's where this is <laughs> now there's a little bit of a twist instead of the usual intermission where we do a photo op and uh, uh meet get to know james <laughs> you look like the fucking meme of the <laughs> James is going to take us on a story. I'm going to start us off with one of the like 10 or 11 images that I've created, all with AI. Now, we're going to start in the area, and James is going to tell a story. Me and James are in all of these pictures, all right? And James is going to tell us what's happening, and then I'm going to lead into the next image with James telling the story. So I will try to make the next image match whatever he's saying. And if I can't, then we're just going to be random. Make sense? Once upon a time, there was... <laughs> <laughs> Shardy got me. <laughs> uh, the apostrophe before turn the end that blurs in the R. That's real good. And, uh, I didn't realize AI had been trained on like the Daily Show. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. Well, once upon a time, uh, AJ and I took a trip to his homeland. Uh, he apparently owed some very serious debts to some very powerful people. And he was going to have to do some incredible sexual favors to repay them. And I was there for emotional support. <laughs> when, as we were parking our car at our hotel, uh, the roof caved in and the spaghetti cooking competition that had been above us collapsed into the garage, flooding us in a sea of marinara covered pasta. AJ, as you can tell, was having the time of life. But me, I was just desperately clinging to the chef to try and stay above the buoyancy level of the noodles as my precious mayonnaise <laughs> floated away. Nice. I mean, everything's, a, everything's a lifeboat in a storm. Yep. Meanwhile, in a small, uh, quiet town up in the mountains, uh, in an alternate timeline, I, having uh, just recently satiated myself sexually, was developing uh, the first conclusive report to submit to the scientific community with my latest invention. AJ had very politely volunteered to be my first test subject. Um, and while the bodysuit was very flattering, unfortunately, the compulsory wig he was required to wear just did not blend in at all. Um, <laughs> as you can see, this is what I uh, call the Seminator 5000. It actually shoots semen back up through your dick into your <laughs> balls in order to enable you to come faster. It's designed to end the refractory period. Goal is if I could walk around hooked into one of these, then I could stay in my svelte post-orgasm form rather than my current ready-to-nut form that you see me in right now. It sounds like that's a cure for uh, low sperm count, too. Unless you're sharing with somebody else, you're just recycling like the same 10,000 of your own <laughs> if your boys aren't swimmers. But yeah, no longer will men have to wait uh, 5, 10, sometimes even a half hour before they're able to fuck again. You know, when we shoot the semen back into the balls, uh, it makes the dick go hard again. It's a definitely a man's creation it's a man's creation simultaneously in a secret underwater facility located off the coast of antiqua a hideous underwater beast never for perceived by a uh, scientific community have been spotted uh while we were out there field testing the new rav4 uh, for distribution to lesbians everywhere. The, <laughs> if you didn't know, the RAV4 is exclusively developed at a facility uh, located some 15,000 miles below the surface of the ocean. Unfortunately, some strange, hideous sea creature broke in and began asking us about the gas mileage that this thing got. While our assistants were uh, either reaching for guns or... Uh, you know, taunting me by putting the mayonnaise on a selfie stick and holding it where I couldn't get it. I was very quickly trying to operate the uh, emergency escape hatch, a.k.a. the back hatch of the vehicle, so that I could get away from this terrifying creature. AJ, of course, as you can just barely make out, is the driver. And that reminds me of a time when AJ and I were both kids. Well, this must have been like back 40 or 50 years or so now. Uh, it was a different time back then. Isn't that right, AJ? It was. We looked pretty similar, but... Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Our childhood, just as I remember it. Need I say anything else? 
important to get back to the root of the story, which, as you all may or may not recall, took place in Italy. After AJ and I extricated ourselves from the swarm of spaghetti noodles, we were finally able to make it to the lair of the dangerous crime boss, where AJ was able to confront his past and atone for his wrongdoings. And how do you atone? With a gun? By providing him a small boat with a... Uh, a rod attached to it for him to balance his uh, AR-15 on. Uh, this particular crime lord also then saw my mayonnaise jug and demanded it from me. And uh, AJ, unfortunately, talk took it from me by surprise and then tossed it into his lap. So this is me trying to lift the crime lord and the boat out of the water to retrieve my mayonnaise while AJ silently reflects on the betrayal of his lifelong friendship with me. This is after I stabbed the fucking American flag into that guy's back, but he didn't seem affected by the wound. Oh. Oh. Every day I'm hustling, hustling. Just to give you guys a look, too, we took a break, you know, after we... Whatever scenario he just gave you about. All right, I was supposed to be weaving these into a story. Look how quickly I forgot that detail. <laughs> I already forgot what you even said about the last one. We were going to you were overtake. Toting. That was your crime boss. That's so right. A toning. the dead on your life. Uh, we then decided to do some sightseeing around the countryside of Europe, uh, which is quite different from the America. Is, uh, but it's a lot of small differences that you might notice in the next photograph here. This yeah. is a great one from a hike we took. So as you can see, we were taking a hike and we stumbled upon a fitness center where uh, they claimed to be able to attach a third ass cheek to you. And AJ was instantly thrilled. Um, I was skeptical, but I wanted to be there and be supportive. So, you know, sort of like a husband in a delivery room, I did everything I could to support him in a situation where there's really nothing I can do the, other than be present and, you know, lend a comforting hand. Uh, AJ was adapting to the procedure quite well, and it seemed like that third cheek was just about to sprout. Um, unfortunately, then our free trial at the gym membership ended, and they wanted like 15 euros or some shit, and we were <laughs> like, fuck you, it's not worth it. So afterwards, we made our way uh, to the U.S. Embassy, where we had to have some, uh, some updates done to our passports before we were able to travel home as uh, AJ had waived some of his rights as a U.S. citizen when electing to undergo that experimental third cheek procedure. And boy, did we have a good time in that office. Why, I remember it just like it was yesterday. Yep, there in that office, uh, which of course had a very nice movie theater, you know, like government fraud, waste, and abuse is at an all-time high. And that's why we need to drain the swamp. This fall, make sure you vote, America, to set this country back on the right track. You know exactly who I'm talking to and exactly who I'm talking about. I don't need to say any fucking more. This picture speaks for itself. It does. You like how I snapped your glasses and hair over here and my beard? So we're little piggies. Uh, we did take a surprise photo op after all, actually. Um, forgot to tell you about this, but we met Jay-Z. I don't know if you guys knew that. Oh, that was when we landed, right? At the end of our trip? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. So there we were, you know, Jay-Z call. Um, you, me, and of course, Bjelts. This was you once again, like Europe had gotten to you. You felt like after passing through the, the Nordic countries that you just wanted to be like a blonde. And no matter how many times I told you it looked like shit, you just insisted on that wig. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, you know, uh, we ran into them in the customs line and they were polite enough to take a picture with us. So, uh, you know, uh, despite the trials and tribulations of the trip and AJ giving away my mayonnaise, um, overall, I think we had a good time and it's only deep in the bond of friendship between us how did this adventure end james <clears throat> well as always aj we finally made it back home and as previously established on an episode like 15 episodes ago you your wife and i are an active thruple so we uh, celebrated returning home with her the only way we know how by feeding her to the eldritch horror elder god that uh, <laughs> has stalked us through all our days never enough blood to satisfy this cruel beast it takes the form of a crying child always to humiliate us as we uh, offer ourselves unto it, never able to satiate its eldritch appetites. It desires blood and the cooling of the cosmos, the heat death of the universe. It seeks to end all that can and should be and return us to a state of void or nothingness. But so long as we can keep it at bay with routine sacrifices, and uh, there's hope, AJ. There's hope.
And that was how our intermission ends. We hope you enjoyed our daily life here, especially with Shrek's thick ass. Don't worry. Uh, 2024 will be the year that we get back on track. I promise you by the end of it, we'll have at least six, maybe even seven more of these up. But uh, <laughs> until that great time occurs, I've been Jokes. He's been AJ. and We've been two white guys in our 30s. And gosh darn it, we'll see you next time. I just love that his face is coming out of the back of his head. In the face he's making it. like a little bandana on. Uh, just totally <laughs> naked, thick up to the nines. And then he's like, oh, I need my kerchief. <laughs> he is thick as fuck. <laughs> Shrek's thick ass. Thick, 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 thick. Thick ass. Thick ass. Thick ass. Thick ass. Thick ass. Thick ass.